Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video, I'm going to take a look at Budget Bomb Hunter or Mech Hunter as it's sometimes called. It's a very strong budget deck, it's definitely a legend capable budget deck, coming in at 1720 dust, it's reasonably priced. I was a little reluctant to look at it very early, I knew that it was going to be strong, because there's simply no way to fit in any of the new cards into this archetype, so this is purely without any Saviors of Uldum cards. It's a fairly aggressive deck, you put your mechs on the board, you can discount your mechs with Galvanizer, then you have a bunch of hard removal, because you have Venomizers, you have Spider Bombs, Venomizer together with the Missile Launcher wipes entire boards, if you can get a spider bomb on the board, you can activate it with the fireworks deck to kill an opponent's minion. Also, a nice thing about fireworks deck is that if you use it on a mech that you have magnetized multiple things on, it activates all the death rattles. So if you can get like Ursatron and magnetize spider bomb and then trigger that with fireworks deck, then it draws you a card and it destroys something. So that's just some amazing things that can be done with the fireworks deck. Get mechs on the board, be aggressive, you have some bombs from Explodinators, bomb tosses, so you have also some damage coming on the board, so that if the opponent wipes your board, they still take damage. As long as you can stick any mechs on the board and you have a lot of death rattles, then all the magnetics are basically charge minions, so you can charge with the war gear by magnetizing it on an existing mech. And in this budget build, I'm running two Coppertail Imposters now, so you can get the Coppertail Imposter set up, it's in stealth. Magnetize on that on the next turn. Some really great things can be done with that. If you want to upgrade this deck, then upgrading is fairly straightforward. Harvest Golem is clearly the weakest card in the stack. Coppertail Imposter probably the second weakest. So Harvest Golems are the first ones to go, and what you want in this deck, you want Snip Snap. You want Leroy Jenkins. You want Ciliax. Those three legendary cards are just incredible fit into this deck. Optionally, you might also consider something like Boom as the flock, even though that's a little bit weaker. And then if you're facing a lot of token decks, you can take in Unleash the Hounds, so that you can fight token decks even more effectively. This one is a bit more trying to get those druids and quest paladins and all of those pushed out of the field before they can stabilize, so it carries a little bit more punch, but doesn't have that Unleash right now. But including Unleash, either instead of a Harvest Golem or instead of a Coppertail Imposter, is definitely an option. It's a powerful deck, unfortunately no new cards can be used, so <laughs> that's a little bit dull of course, but still, if you want to play Hunter on a budget, then this is one very good option. As for the mulligans with this deck, you're just looking to play on a curve. Mekaru, Galvanizer, Framebot, Ursatron are your ideal cards that you mulligan for. If you have some other early game, you can hold on to an Animal Companion. Sometimes you can already see that, okay, I'm going to go for some specific line, so Fireworks deck with some Death Rattles might work. Sometimes in a very aggressive matchup, you might even want to go Mekaru Fireworks deck. Sometimes you have that Fireworks deck Spider Bomb already set up. Sometimes you have Fireworks deck Ursatron already set up. Those are some of the options you have, but in general it's Mekaru, Galvanizer, Framebot, Ursatron. Those are the four main cards that you target. If you enjoy this content, then please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more. And now, let's go take a look at Budget Bomb Hunter in Saviors of Uldum. This is one of the best tree drops, but I still think I need faster, faster cards here. What's the highest you've gotten in rank? Somewhere in the 30s, I guess. I really haven't kept track. I didn't keep track back then, and I haven't started afterwards either. I guess it was somewhere in the 30s. Ooh, I do like Ursatron. Let's play Ursatron. I really like drawing more mechs. Okay. What do I want to play here? I mean, I could play like Venomizer and kill it. Let's see about the Animal Companion first. Well, Leok does allow me to kill that one too. I think we use Leok and kill it. Then I can get an upgradable frame without there. 
He could have like some kind of an unleash play, of course. Mark sure it isn't that impressive. That was a snap pick. Which spell would you pick that fast? This one I kind of want to die because I want to draw those mechs. So I think I just war gear here. So I will have two high health minions. So it's more difficult to get rid of multiple minions. So if he has like a freezing trap, then the freezing trap isn't that effective. Okay, seven locusts with rush was not something that I expected. Well done. <laughs> Not what I expected at all. So that's 4 damage, 6 damage, puts him down to 11. How do I just deal a lot of damage? Mm -hmm. I probably do use a spider bomb now. And I think I'm also magnetizing a venomizer here. And I'm hero cowering and I'm pushing this damage in. Put him down to 7. So from here... It already starts to be difficult for him to survive even just against my hero power. He can kill this, but if he kills this I draw another mech. But he could roll Animal Companion and Deadly Shot. Okay. We play more stuff and we hero power. So he could have a Freezing Trap. Can he really get rid of both of these? I don't think he can. Contra Warrior is tough because I don't have a lot of finishers. Swarm is quite good pick from Mark Shadow Shimmer Fly. He yeah, had Zul'jin casting that. That's that's terrible, by the way. I really don't want Zul'jin to cast that. Oh boy. That hurts. Eternium Roar. What can you do? That's what warriors do. This place is scary. The scary place to ow. Well, if I play Ursatron, he can just kill it. I probably need to bomb that one. And so so welcome to the guard. Thank you so much for your support. I truly appreciate that. I need to hit him in the face a little bit here. Oh, come on, not another flunky. That's too flunky. Way too flunky. Double flunky turning rover opener. Painful. Galvanizer, but not a lot of mechs in hand. He may or may not have a rush minion. He didn't have a town crier. He has more taunts, though. I need to bomb that one too. And I believe I need to hero power here. And it could be good if Zuzum cast him on Corridor. Well, sir. Oh no! Even This is getting even flunkier. So flunky. So very, very flunky. Ouch. War gear isn't the play, I think. I think Ursatron Fireworks tech is the play. I need to draw more stuff. But now he can start unleashing some. Well, it's just a Warpath play, I see. But Warpath still means that I get more stuff. That's not all bad. Now I think I can galvanize. I could play the Copper Tail Imposter. I can also galvanize. If I do Ursatron Fireworks tech, that's not all bad. Gives me more resources immediately. Doesn't allow me to do Fireworks tech Spider Bomb later though. So is it Ursatron Fireworks tech or do I do Fireworks tech Spider Bomb later? How do I think this game is going to go? 
I mean, it's obviously going pretty poorly so far. I think it serves a turn fireworks deck. Let's just draw more stuff right now. That's the risk, of course. Well, war gear here would allow me to push through. Can't play the Copetail Imposter yet. They can still be brawls. They can be a big warpath too. Well, I already saw one warpath, so I think I still go for this line. But a big warpath here would be excellent for him. I still think this is what I need to do on this turn. So now I have seen there's still one random taunt, one discovered taunt left. Just a brawl. Okay, and I have two out of three to win the brawl. So I don't even mind a brawl that much here. Is he going to have another brawl? Who knows? We could also get some taunt wardens or something up there. If I play replicating menace on this, I will have four mana left over. So I can't do like Copetail Imposter hero power. It's just the Copetail Imposter threatening enough. It might actually be, yeah. I think we're trying with these. Punch the warrior in the face a little bit more here. The 9 5 can be cleared with rush minions. Or with the shield slam. Shield block shield slam, obviously not just a regular shield slam. Options. Well, spider bomb would obviously allow me to just trade that away. But I can do animal companion. Ah, get the worst one. I would have liked either of the others because they would have been damage. I'm probably forced to commit the spider bomb here. Which is a bit bad because now he has so many options to gain control of the board. And I'm running out of reach. Because taunt wardens or anything can just gain control here. Dino Medic can even kill my animal companion. Zero Nine is pretty good. No, it's not really good. But in this position, four, five, six, seven damage here. So I'd have to magnetize the missile launcher in order to get through that. Or get something useful from the animal companion. Didn't get Venomizers. Had just one spider woman spent that. Oh boy. Let's see what I can roll from this. Actually, do roll Huffer. And I can push through. So, face, face. Hero power to the face. Play the Harvest Golem on the board, too. I've seen one warpath, one brawl. There can still be more of those. He has the coin. He has the coin so he can hero power. And he managed to roll the AoE hero power. So he trades in with the Dino Medic first. Or after. And he stays alive. No, this. No, that, that's just so incredibly wrong. Seven damage. Not enough mana to deal all the damage. And he's going to get the armor next turn. That's so incredibly good. Nine damage. He's going to go down to five, but he's going to get back to twelve next turn. I can't play the missile launcher, right? It has to be a spider bomb here.
This has got to be the way. This pushes in the damage. Then I make a roll out there too. But he rolled the AOE followed by the blast shield. So he gets to 11 with the blast shield. Mechs have rush now. Omega Devastators are online. Oh no! He gains more armor from that. Oh, that was so good too. Already at 6. Then... Okay, 50-50. Can I kill the Devastator? No, I missed the 50-50 roll. I set that up specifically so that I can try to get the Devastator rolls potentially. That was that was an intentional setup. But I unfortunately lost the roll. So I could push 7 now, put him down to 6. That's a 3 turn clock. If he doesn't get more armor. I have to I have to push the for the three turn clock here. There is definitely a chance that he does not get more armor within three turns. That's absolutely possible. He could draw Ziliax. Okay. He needs Ziliax within three turns. Or armor. One or the other. He got rid of the missile launcher, so I don't have another missile launcher coming. Explodinator can give some damage. Can he find a Ziliax? Ziliax or armor. That's what he needs. Yes, three turns. Oh no, he got the armor. That means that he wins, I guess. He had three turns to get that armor. Three 25% rolls. And he won. That was game. What trick? I don't, I don't understand. I know how good it feels as warrior to stabilize. Alright. Well, I guess that's cool. Alright, we're in a mirror. Oh, it's up for the lose, okay. Mm, Alright, cool. He's not playing a budget version, he has snip snap. Feels bad, man. How do I even deal with this? I mean, I can magnetize the spider bomb here. Then I can kill the snip snap. But then he will still have the two microbots. So he can still keep magnetizing. Oh boy. I could try to build more mechs on the board. I have to build more mechs on the board. More mechs with death rattles on the board, so that he can't drive me off the board. Then spider bomb at a strategic moment, like if he ma over magnetizes on that minion. Now it's going to give him five microbots though. And that's a lot of microbots. Let me tell you. But I guess I don't have much anything better here. Ooh, I wonder what this does. That's a lot of microbots. I could trade away a couple. That's an option. Can't do much about magnetization. 
What a wall face. I think I just hit him in the face. Hi, why? What do you think about Dr. Boon hero card nerf? Good nerf. Well, it's a bit lazy, but it's something. Just found the token druid is like the Contra killer. Yeah, token druid is pretty nice. What is my purpose? Okay, then the cheap stuff. Not a lot of cheap stuff. Uh, you don't want to... Wasn't that over trading a little? I thought it might have been. At this point I think I want to trade away the frame bot. And I want to trade away the 1-1. One, one. I don't want to play my Urza turn and hero power. Leave him with just one minion on the board. Sure, he can magnetize something on that. And he might have the fireworks deck to get a 50-50 roll. That's not useful at all. So I could push 11 to face. Or I could push 8 to face and have a stealth copper tail imposter. If he had a fireworks deck for a spider bomb, he would have used it, right? 11 to face, he goes down to 9. There's still things he could have. 8 to face, he goes down to 12. I think we try the imposter here. Imposter and face. Put him down to 12. Ziliax is the main out for him. Obviously, if you can find Ziliax, that's pretty good. Not too worried about that one. Because, like, okay, now you have that. Actually, missile launcher is just better here. I just missile launcher his face for eight, for nine, that is. So I don't leave him with a silly axe that could be magnetized on a minion on a bo on the board. Yeah, he's just dead. Okay, I think I can try to keep a turn. It gives me more resources. I have to mulligan everything else because I would also need to get something for earlier. Yeah. But Mekaru will do. He kept three cards, has the coin. He's a quest shaman. With this kind of a hand I think I need to just go all in very quickly. And not play around mind control tech. I believe that's the way with this kind of a hand. I do trade that one away. Get an Urza turn out there. Try to push. Okay, is there a lucky coming? Ah, the two damage lucky. The infamous two damage lucky. Very nice lucky. I need to kill the lackeys though. Lackeys are scary. But then I do need to make a choice between the Explodinator, another Ursatron, or Framebot Hero Power. What if he bounces the Cable Rat back and gets even more lackeys with that? Because lackeys are pretty scary. What if he has a mind control tech? Lots of nasty questions. Do I trade? He plays Box Slosher, gets this back. I think I will trade eventually, yeah. Three out of six already into the three out of six already into the quest. Still has the coin left, still has a kept card left. Generating more lackeys. Lackeys are scary. Develop another Ursatron. Kill the cable rat. 
but this one's going face now I think. Five out of six into the quest. He can get double lucky value already this turn. Il nasty that there's the stroll attack going on. What can you do? Troll attacks happen. Oh no, we fast elemental. That was very powerful. Very nice, very nice. Now he also has a lackey on board. I mean, I could kill that lackey. I'm not getting a whole lot done if I do. What if he bounces this back? If I play Galvanizer now, then next turn I would be able to play Missile Launcher Venomizer. I don't need it next turn yet. This is fine. Let's do this. Yeah, there are plenty of shamans indeed. Oh no, another two lackeys. If he has a life drinker, he probably gets just enough damage from that. If Shaman is up being too powerful, please have to consider a quest Shaman nerf. Well, Shaman still has some clear weaknesses. I don't think it's going to be too powerful. Obviously, it can have a lot of value. Of course it's the right way. But still... I don't see it being too powerful here. This is an interesting turn. The thing I'm most worried about is the Life Drinker. I want to hold on to the Missile Launcher Venomizer combo. To clean up the board if I get into a bad spot. I'm also mildly concerned about mind control tech at the moment. Too bad that missile launcher venomizer are the only things that I could magnetize right now. So I can like play the copper tail imposter and hero power. I could play animal companion. Animal companion galvanizer would again give him the option to mind control tech. Always Huffer. Well, I guess Huffer is going face. I'm trying to put him in the position where he would need to find the life drinkers. In order to win. Because I have that one emergency button board clearing missile launcher venomizer. If things get too hectic. And then also those bombs threaten to deal some damage. Yep, that's some damage from bombs, all right. How much damage does he have? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He will need eight more from hand. Does he have eight from hand? How many lackeys does he have? He does have a couple of lackeys there. There is a chance that there is aid from hand. But if I pull the missile launcher venomizer too early. Aid from hand would be one damage lackey plus life drinker. Or a wasp. I still think I need to trigger this now. I think I have to trigger this now. So, but can he put enough stuff on, kill this and put enough stuff on the board to have lethal next turn? Maybe he can. He has two lackeys. He might have a second wasp. I've seen both sandstorm elementals and I've seen one wasp now. So that makes me think it's a little bit less likely that he has an answer to this. Like, if he has an answer to this, he probably would have had the lethal damage to just kill me as well. That was kind of the thing here. And he would have had the lethal damage. That would have just done it. That would have done it perfectly. One more lucky. 
It's enough for one imposter to get through next turn. So this is Galvanizer. Life Drinker can just turn everything into his favor. Let's try this. Life Drinker is what he needs. Life Drinker provides enough of a swing to win. Hard to see what else could do it. Four one cost minions. That that might be enough to find the taunts. Because four plus two from the hero power is enough, so I can push through one big taunt. Like if that was the Titanic lackey and he made this into a three, three seven taunt, I could kill it and push through the six. That was the plan behind this move. He had the life drinker all along. Oh no. But that's not enough without any taunts. Phew. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.